at Ichinose Academy, student counselor Mafio Kirisu is having a serious conversation with the school headmaster. She coldly asserts that she wants no part in teaching students who make an effort for nothing. A few months later, in the same office, the headmaster laments about experiencing another failure. He glances at a couple of recommendation forms on his desk, particularly that of a certain Nariyuki Yuiga. In a classroom at the same academy, Rizu Ogata has just been tasked to solve an intricate math equation. Effortlessly, she jots down the correct answer on the chalkboard, but with no accompanying solutions. When asked by her teacher, she says that she automatically knew the answer the moment she saw the question. So, she decided to skip all the work. When it comes to math and physics, the formidable Rizu is peerless. She's an astonishing 143 centimeters tall, giving her the nickname Thumbelina Supercomputer. In another classroom, a middle-aged teacher weeps out an actual waterfall as he gushes over the heart-trending, inspiring essay Fumino Furuhashi wrote. Well, to her, the paper was just a walk in the park. One of her classmates even gossips that Fumino was just napping until 10 minutes before they had to submit their output. This little lady's a pro at modern Japanese, ancient writing, Chinese classics, and even procrastination. You know what they say, get you a girl who can do both. On the other side of the barbed fence, you have people who weren't born with extraordinary talent. Those who actually need to take the time to digest concepts. Say hello to Nariyuki Yuiga. This boy spends a lot of his time studying like a madman since he's aiming for the special VIP recommendation. If he gets chosen for this prestigious program, he'll instantly proceed to the affiliated university without taking the entrance exams. Plus, his tuition will be paid for to boot. After school, Nariyuki is summoned to the headmaster's office. The headmaster notes that there doesn't seem to be any subject that he excels at, but despite this, he maintained grades of 80% or higher in all his classes. Plus, there have been no complaints about his behavior. Without further ado, the headmaster tells the confused boy that he would be happy to award him the special VIP recommendation. However, there's a catch, and that catch comes in the form of Rizu and Fumino. In exchange for the VIP status, Nariyuki must tutor and help the girls get into their chosen universities. After leaving the office, the trio gathers at a small playground kiosk. Remembering their previous tutoring experiences, the formula fanatic Rizu is sure he'll backpedal on the agreement and hand them off to someone else again. Upon hearing this, Fumino looks at Nariyuki with some irresistible puppy dog eyes. Luckily for her, Nariyuki has no intentions of deserting them and he makes that much clear. Anything for that sweet, sweet VIP recommendation. Before officially starting their first tutorial sesh, Nariyuki asks the duo which universities they're currently eyeing. Rizu's thinking about pursuing the liberal arts, while Fumino wants to study science. So basically, these two want to learn the exact opposite of what they are considered geniuses in. On top of this, they also want to get into universities that are specializing in those specific fields. Poor Nariyuki can only bang his head in frustration. The pressure is on. But then, he remembers that these girls are still geniuses, right? So that means that even if the subjects are outside their field of expertise, they can still be brilliant. Yeah, no. After just a few minutes, the girls give up and admit that everything just seems like gibberish to them. Rizu's taking a completely pragmatic approach to literature. How the hell can she explain the protagonist's feelings? That's like decoding the brain's entire structure, which science can't even do. Fumino, on the other hand, is crouching in embarrassment. A girl can seem to comprehend the notion of putting numbers and letters together. Hard same. Breathe in, breathe out. Nariyuki struggles to compose himself. Looks like this is gonna be a total pain in the The main thing to focus on is just improving upon their weak points. He gives each girl an assignment and asks them to complete it by the next day. It's homework checking time and apparently, both geniuses scored very low on the assessments he's given them. Nariyuki didn't really expect the results to be this low, but no matter, he still pushes through. Deciding they'll focus on what they've missed so far and then come up with more challenging questions a few days later. However, even more days later, their marks have gone nowhere but down, down, below. Like, one digit low. But you know, they are an improvement compared to their previous test scores, albeit a tiny improvement. Hey, slow progress is still progress, right? 
one week later, Nariyuki actually sees a drastic improvement in their test scores. They, they flopped. Real, real bad. At this point, he's already at his wit's end. How could this be? They've been answering the same test every day for a week. Fumino can only hide her face in embarrassment, apologizing for being a useless water flea. The equally flustered Rizu insists that it's not her, it's the test. Something's wrong with it. Yeah, Nariyuki can definitely see why they've just been passed around the school faculty like hot potatoes. He asks them to take out the workbook they've been using. Since they're experts in the field the other person wants to study, he suggests they try teaching each other. Like a pair of wise ancient Greek philosophers, they reply that they simply don't know what they don't know. He suggests that maybe they should just take an entrance exam related to their specialty. After all, they're both astoundingly talented in their own unique ways. It would be easier for them to simply use the gifts they have. Rizu blasts him for this comment, slamming her hands onto the table. She mentions that she's sick of having people dictate what her life should be like. After this outburst, she storms off. Fumina looks at Nariyuki with pleading eyes, reminding him of his bold statement of not deserting them. Still, she can't help but think that the boy may be right. It's the same thing they've heard from everyone else. At home, Nariyuki thinks about Rizu and Fumino. Well, they'll just have to make adjustments to the schools of their choice. For their sake and for the sake of his special VIP recommendation too. He skims through their workbooks and discovers they're packed with notes from cover to cover. But they're all just a bunch of abstract drivel. Rizu attempted to answer modern Japanese problems with calculations. Upon seeing this, Nariyuki remembers something his father once taught him, which gives him the motivation to help the girls a bit more. The next day after class, Nariyuki returns the notebooks to the two girls. He also hands them some tips and tricks he concocted after analyzing their solutions. He tells them that he, too, was laughably bad at answering homework in the past, so he knows all too well how frustrating it is for the two of them as they struggle to grasp the concepts. Geniuses or not, there's no way they could be happy when they're just unable to grasp something they want to learn. He says, I'll make you both happy. Stick with me, for better or for worse. Fumino becomes flustered and exclaims, Yeah, you are professing your love to us simultaneously? The boy flips out and tries to explain himself, saying that he meant the three should do their best together. He was also going to suggest convening at the library to work on foundational knowledge. The duo express their gratitude and Nariyuki can help but blush at the sight in front of him. Nariyuki does some homework at the library while the two girls work on their own assignments. But after a while, Rizu remarks that she has to go. Fumino reveals that Rizu has to help with her family's udon restaurant. As Nariyuki and Fumino walk down the streets in the cool evening air, she once again grovels about her low score, specifically a 3. Nariyuki reassures her that it's better to have room for growth than clicking with something on your first try. Suddenly, Fumino couldn't help but gaze at the sky and admire the constellations. The girl recounts that she finds herself looking for her late mother's star on nights when the sky is beautiful. Thus, she wants her life to be connected to the star somehow. But for that to happen, she has to pass the science exam. She'll make sure to conquer any weaknesses she has to begin seriously studying astronomy. As Fumino bids goodbye, Nariyuki reminds her that he'll help her make progress with science. He eventually passes by the park where they usually study and spots Rizu there. He approaches her and she mentions she's taking a breather on the way back from a delivery. She's currently practicing a card game meant for 2 to 10 people all by herself, and the math goddess reveals that she adores board games and card games. Wanting to keep the girl company, Nariyuki sits down and offers to play a game for 2. Some time passes and Nariyuki wins 20 times in a row. Defeated, Rizu notes that she can't seem to draw a conclusion based on probability and calculations alone. Anything related to human emotions, including competitive games, baffles her mind. However, she genuinely wants to understand more about that. And that's why she wants to pass the liberal arts exam with flying colors and pursue psychology. With this, Nariyuki tells her that she can hang out with him anytime and Rizu doesn't have to be constantly alone during her break from work. The next day, Nariyuki is walking with his friends but his mind is hovering elsewhere. Today, he has to give his periodic report to the headmaster and make some materials for Fumino and Rizu. Suddenly, a girl named Uruka Takemoto calls out to him, or more like lands a blow at the back of his neck, to borrow his notebook. As he reprimands her to stop hitting him whenever they meet, she mentions that she's on her way to practice, so she won't have time to do the homework due tomorrow. But surely, Nariyuki has already finished his work, so 
would he pretty please let her copy his output. It turns out they went to the same middle school together, which is why she acts so familiar with him. He tells her to do her own homework once in a while. At the headmaster's office, Nariyuki reports that Rizu and Fumino have gradually begun to improve. Well, by like really, really small increments. But he's technically not lying. Satisfied with this report, the headmaster remarks that he's heard Nariyuki has been friends with Uruka since middle school. As a sports scholarship student, Uruka really has exceptional athletic prowess. Not only is she the star of the swim team and the pride of the academy, but she also effortlessly snatches victory everywhere with her signature freestyle. They don't call her the shimmering mermaid princess for nothing. However, her schoolwork is a complete and utter disaster. She's eager to obtain a recommendation, but that's still up for debate. Finally, the headmaster concludes by saying there's one more girl he'd like for Nariyuki to tutor. That mystery maiden is none other than the energetic Uruka. After meeting with the headmaster, Nariyuki heads to the pool and observes Uruka practicing laps. She sees him and jokingly asks whether he's there to peep at her. Nariyuki spills the beans that the headmaster has asked him to be her tutor. She does remark that with a sports recommendation for Ottawa University, she won't need to study anymore. However, he reminds her that this year, the institution is now looking for well-rounded students using both swim meet outcomes and academic test results, including those in the English subject. Nariyuki tells her that his special VAP recommendation is on the line, so like it or not, she's gonna have to work hard. As Nariyuki chases after her, he slips and unluckily falls into the pool. With quick reflexes, Uruka instantly rushes to save Nariyuki from drowning. At the same time, Rizu and Fumino arrive at the pool area and catch Nariyuki in a questionable position. He's on top of Uruka, saying questionable things like, Struggle all you like, I've got you now. The two geniuses totally have the wrong idea, and Fumino even whacks Nariyuki on the head with a fire extinguisher. Uruka is surprised to see the two popular brainiacs of their school and asks Nariyuki if he knows them. They then explain the whole situation to the athlete. Despite being so against having Fumino as her tutor just a few moments ago, Uruka suddenly agrees to the plan. One day after school, Rizu is called by one of her teachers to inform her that she's the only one who hasn't turned in her assignment. He decides to extend the deadline to the next day and reminds her to submit it by then. In need of help, Rizu visits Nariyuki's home to ask him how to write a short essay. She explains that it's impossible for her to write about something that doesn't have a logical, rigorous solution. The boy replies that all he can do is teach her the fundamentals. Afterward, Rizu receives a text from Uruka saying she doesn't have practice tonight, so she's planning to sing karaoke. She replies that she can't go since she's currently studying at Nariyuki's house. In less than a second, Uruka arrives at Nariyuki's home, saying that she just thought of something she wanted Nariyuki to teach her too. They're about to begin studying when suddenly, a power outage occurs. Uruka is still lively despite this as she says it's exciting when blackouts happen, leaving Rizu wondering why she's in such high spirits. Nariyuki notices that Rizu is sticking close to him. He's about to ask her if she has a fear of the dark before she cuts him off. Coincidentally, both Uruka's and Rizu's phones run out of battery. Now fully bathed in darkness, Rizu clings to Nariyuki more than ever. Uruka wonders if she's seeing things right, but she dismisses this idea. To her, Rizu would be the last person to use the dark as an opportunity to snuggle up with someone. She realizes that she can totally do this and nearly summons the courage to jump into Nariyuki's arms. But all she can do is lightly grab onto the boy's sleeve and mention how she's scared. In the first place, if she did have that courage, she would have already confessed her feelings to him in middle school. Nariyuki tells the two girls not to worry. He lights up a makeshift candle, explaining that with salad oil, tissues, and aluminum foil, anybody can make one in no time. They're used to the power going out in their place. On nights like these, he uses this type of light for studying. Suddenly, the makeshift candle's light goes off, and Nariyuki uses his hands to find the lighter in the dark. As he's doing this, he unintentionally grabs each of the girls in, let's just say, not-so-safe places. The power is eventually restored and the two girls are bright red with embarrassment. As punishment, they paste a piece of paper with the word pervert on Nariyuki's back. The following day at school, the math whiz tells Nariyuki that she was able to write the essay and the teacher finally accepted it when she turned it in. She says that it's because of him, expressing her gratitude for all of Nariyuki's efforts. 
Uraka reads the school bulletin board announcement about the special sports class's English vocabulary test. Failure would result in supplementary lessons and disbarment from club activities. With this, she asks for Nariyuki's help. She just needs to learn 50 words by next week or else she'll have to take more lessons. The swimmer insists that he has no idea how hard it is for her to remember things. On her last test result, she got a whopping zero. None of the words were right. After a few hours, Uruka is about to give up. She asks Nariyuki if he can show her how much fun English is. But the boy flat out tells her it isn't fun. And studying can be tough for someone who isn't used to it. However, with the humble start, you can laboriously accumulate knowledge one step at a time. Much like how Uruka got into swimming. When it comes to her sport, Uruka's ability to focus is second to none. A bright idea flashes through Nariyuki's mind. Uruka's ability to concentrate on swimming could be applied to her studying. The plan is simple. He shows her an English word and then she has to swim to the bottom of the pool to translate its Japanese meaning. Using this strategy, Uruka gets a perfect 50 out of 50. She couldn't be any happier. As they're going home that day, Uruka tells Nariyuki that even though studying is tough, working hard towards a goal together has been pretty enjoyable. And Nariyuki likely feels the same. While it was difficult at first to adjust to the strange situation of teaching geniuses subjects they struggled at, he gained something as important as his shining VIP recommendation. True friends. Surely, with a little more elbow grease, Nariyuki can help Fumino and Rizu soar to greater heights. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.